Okay, so I'm back working on my 2006 uh, Mazda Tribute here. We are going to be changing out these coil packs here today, and uh, they are equally as important as your spark plugs, making sure that you got a good, strong spark. Um, <clears throat> we're going to also go ahead and do the intake gaskets while we're at it. Anytime I pull these off, um, I'll get a set of intake gaskets you definitely don't want to have any leaks there there's the part number I believe these are all the same through 01 to 06 <clears throat> here is you got six of these if it will come out here and these are not Real expensive. Uh, this vehicle has uh, getting close to 190,000 miles. I doubt they've ever been changed. So, anyways, we've got all those. Um, so, we're just going to go ahead and get started here now. Okay, and I'd also point out uh, one of the reasons I'm changing these. I'm having some. Uh, hesitation and stuff on acceleration and I know that the spark plugs are good it's got some good iridium plugs on here so uh, this is the next cheapest um, way to go about this uh, I feel like these need to be changed anyway okay so and as you know what makes it difficult on all these v6 uh, you got the intake sitting right over the top of where you need to get to your spark plugs whether it be your coil packs or whatever so you know that's got to come out of the way to be able to get to the rear the front is no problem but um, there's a lot of things that just need to be removed to be able to get that off of there we're just going to start uh, go ahead and get this negative tuck and loose here and get it out of the way okay so next time we're going to get this tube here um, you've got right here you just slide that over and you have to push it with your fingernail like that and then you should be able to just give it a pull up <clears throat> this end down here just give it a pull it's just got an o-ring but it should pop up off there so so it just it just snaps in there and it has an o-ring so we're just going to set that aside and we'll go ahead uh, and get us an eight millimeter and we'll get this band go ahead and get this loosened up so we can slip this off and get this one right here And then we're just going to kind of squeeze this a little bit and just remove it from one side at a time. And then we'll get the other part off of the off of the throttle body there. Okay, so we got that loose. We'll just go ahead and set that aside. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is get this shroud off of here. We've got three eight millimeters down in there and we're just going to get in there and get those loose and um, sometimes they'll be stuck and you won't have any choice but to simply loosen the whole stud the whole stud will come out with it sometimes if they get rusted on there but you just do what you got to do Okay, so I'm just going to lift this up carefully with those still on there. Um, otherwise, I need to use a magnet to get down there and get them. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and set this aside. We just left the little nuts in there. Okay, I'm going to focus on these throttle cables next. You've got these 8 millimeters. And we're going to take it loose right there. We got these two we'll go ahead and loosen these up 
and just put these little bolts back where they go and uh, once we get those out we'll get the cables loose here okay and I can see we got those loose this one's loose now for this you just give it a pull in that direction and you can see how that snaps on there now for this one you need to spin your throttle back like I got it there and then use your other hand and wiggle that right out of there just about got it here a little bit more difficult doing it one-handed okay so that's all there is to that so now we can just set these kind of out of the way or pull them out of the way whatever we need to do they're the main thing they're loose from the intake okay we're going to just go ahead and disconnect our IC and then we'll go ahead and disconnect the throttle sensor here and we're going to have um, We'll go ahead and probably work on these right here. We've got uh, eight millimeters that go in here for the EGR. And we're just gonna take the bolts out here and here. And once we get this loose, we'll have enough slack to slip the pipe out of there. Says I don't wanna disturb uh, the gaskets that's going to this. This has a lot more of an O-ring on it. Okay, and you can see that's loose already and the little o-ring go ahead and disconnect this back here for now and we've also got a wire studded uh, part right here that we need to push off because we have to be able to get uh, this loose as well I believe it's easier than taking all of those vacuum lines loose there. <clears throat> so we're just going to go ahead and take that loose. And you can see we also got, this is part of our wire harness. And it has a part of that plastic part that bolts onto there. You don't want to break that as well because it holds that harness up. So we've, again, we've got these just little um, eight millimeters, I believe. Well, actually this may be a 10 here. But anyways, we need to get those out right there as well. So I'm gonna get a 10. Okay, so this is a 10 here, but the nut that's holding this harness back here, if you can see, Oh, where I'm pointing here, that is an eight. So I've got to get that eight millimeter nut off of there. So I'm just working on this and this eight nut that's holding that right there first. Okay, the eight millimeter nut was stuck on, so it just uh, got the whole stud out of there, which is fine. It's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to get this 10 millimeter stud out now. Okay, now that's loose, just pushed over out of the way. And this is, this is stuck on here because that's stuck on that stud. That's fine. We can put it back just like that. We're just got it. It's loose from the intake. Okay, we've got another one of these. Just like I said, just push that over and that will push back off there. Just that simple. And that's good enough right there. Now we're going to take some pliers and we're just going to squeeze this clamp and remove the hose right here. Okay, that's loose. We've got another one right here. Just give that a push off. And just try to take a mental note of where these go. <clears throat> and looks like we've got a couple of these connectors. Now we can either release, there's usually a tab on the bottom here. You can slide these off, or we can simply push it through which is what I'm going to do. 
But there is also a tab right here if you lift up. Let me show you. Right there, if you lift up slightly on that, you can slide this connector off of this piece right here. It'll simply slide off. But they're just as easy just to pull out of here, so I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to pop this bottom one off. Well, the top one was easy anyway. Okay, now you can see that those are loose. It's fine. We're just getting everything disconnected from the intake. And it's not a whole lot. It seems like there's a lot, but it's not a whole lot. <coughs> and um, we have got a couple of these coolant hoses that run in to the... Um, throttle housing it's like a warmer or something <clears throat> I've never really understood uh, how they work but basically uh, we're gonna plug these off we're gonna take and plug them off so we're not leaking any coolant anywhere and we'll put a pan down under here just to be cautious with this so um, anyways we're gonna go ahead and just take some pliers and remove this here. Now you could also <clears throat> to avoid having to mess this coolant and actually I may even do this myself right now <clears throat> because I need to take this off to clean it behind because you can see you can see all that in there and where it gets dirty is like behind it and behind that throttle plate but I've got a gasket in my kit that's going behind this. I'll show you that. So I think we're just going to go ahead and take these bolts out and pull this over because I really don't feel like messing with these coolant lines right now. And I think that'll be the easier way to do it. So we're going to get the 10 millimeter over here. And we've got one there, one there, and then we got one down here on this, this, uh, this wire is here. And I just broke the connector. But anyways, that just comes off right there. Uh, fuck it. These things are really stubborn sometimes, but that comes off. You get a screwdriver and pop it off there, and then there's one more on this side. And I'm going to work on that, just getting those four 10 millimeters out. Okay, and I'm just using my small ratchet. Everything I've done here, nothing has been tight enough to use more than a quarter inch ratchet. So we're just remember where the studded one goes right there put it back of course my little clip is broken so it's not going to matter too much so we're just going to get these four out and then we'll just pull this off here okay so we got those bolts out of there okay and now you can see with that loose there's plenty of plenty of room it's it'll just flop back here out of the way now here is what I was talking about where to get gunked up and you start getting problems with your idle where it's sticking and you can see that it's pretty pretty bad in here so this will give us a chance to uh, wipe this out a little bit we'll, we'll use some starter fluid and clean it up and then right here uh, we'll be replacing the seal right here with the one in the kit and like I said we don't have to disturb those coolant hoses because I really hate it seems like these things get disturbed, they start dripping, and then you got cooling everywhere. So, <clears throat> said we're going to go ahead, I think there is another, it seems like I've got another one somewhere back there under the bottom, but we're going to go ahead at this point. We have these 8 millimeters on this upper part of this intake. So we got about eight of them here, and we're just going to get our extension over here and start taking these out because I believe we got most everything loose at this point. Okay, so I just got an extension on here. Now that's just the way that these extension sizes I have—they're either short or they're long. There's like no in between. So we're going to just go through here and take each one of these out. And these 
those don't get torqued down a whole lot. Be careful with over torquing these. So we're just going to get all eight of these here and we're going to remove this upper part as we get these completely loose. Okay, this one here is for your lower intake, by the way. Now, if your bolts aren't broken, you'll notice you get them completely loose, they won't come out of there, and they shouldn't. They should be like that. And that keeps them from, keeps from losing them, I guess. All right, so we got this loose, and we are going to start lifting up on this end. <clears throat> and we're gonna work this out of that EGR there, hopefully. Probably gonna need my other hand, but it should, we should be able to wiggle it out. I think we've got, yes. Okay, I knew there was something else. We've got another hose right here that is connected right here. Looks like we've got a, um, just one of those spring connectors back there. But um, it's kind of difficult to get to where it's at there. So I think I'm going to disconnect it right up here. I think it'll be easier to push that off there. And it's just a um, piece of hose there that uh, we can push off of there. Not for sure on that part. I don't want to disturb that, but I'm going to try to just push that off there. And you can see how the way this hose is coming around, it's kind of like cavitating right there. So that could be a problem. Maybe wanting to replace this. So anyway, I'm going to disconnect it right up here. Okay, so I wound up disconnecting this clamp here. Uh, that up there wasn't wanting to come loose either. So I wound up disconnecting it right here from this throttle housing. Now it would make it easier, like I said, I don't want to disturb this gasket because I don't have another one. So I'm wanting to leave that connected, but it would be easier if this was off and then I could lift this up and get to the bottom of this a little bit easier. Okay, so I got that loose. This probably needs to be replaced because it has said cavitated right there. It's because it bends around this and it probably got hot one time and it just sucked in. So I will need to do uh, some fixing on this. However, that end up there did not want to come loose. So I'd probably have to cut it off of there. Uh, this under here, I mean, really, in my opinion, don't even need a clamp. This was stuck on this under here so tight onto that. As you can see, there's like no need to even clamp that thing. I mean, it was no danger, no danger of going anywhere. All right, so we're going to go back to wiggling this out of here. And uh, we'll see if there's anything else holding anywhere. It looks like we've got it. See, that has kind of a hook on it there. It's just the way that it goes in there. But you can wiggle it out off of there, no problem. And that is... Uh, this is 99% of your job right here. So, pretty dirty down in here. But um, if you haven't done your smart plugs, you know, you know, definitely go ahead and do those. At least do your back ones because uh, very difficult to get to this. It looks to me like. These don't look too bad, actually. Somebody may have already tackled these. They're not terrible, but we'll replace them since we're in here. Okay, I took that other end of that hose loose from this down here. You can see how it's got these, this that grips that hose real good, and that's the reason that didn't want to come off of there. It's just, uh, 
you can push it on there but that was having trouble getting that off but it's really grips on there I cut it and even at that it was not real easy but you can see this hose is like completely cavitated right here so we're gonna have to get another one and replace you can get um, this stuff unless you got special bins and stuff like this doesn't but uh, you can get this any part store by the roll just cut you off a foot or two get you a couple foot or whatever to make sure you got plenty and just slap it on there just take the piece and get as close to that inside diameter as you can get okay we're just going to go ahead and take these up and out of there and work on replacing these here okay so we're just getting these into place and they're made to where they will hold their self in pretty good without falling out doesn't matter which side there's those okay now it's up to you if you want to replace your lower intakes or not you could probably stop at that and you may be fine um, however I'm going to try and remove this in the easiest way I can possible um, what I'm going to try to do I think there's enough slack without disconnecting everything on here I'm just going to try to pick it up and take the old intakes out and put the new ones in it just it concerns me because I don't know if these have been changed uh, you know you get a little bit of water in there and you start getting a leak and it can suck it down in there I've seen them hydrolock before and definitely not worth passing this up um, you know they're inexpensive and <clears throat> it's definitely worth doing while you're in here okay the eight millimeters holding the intakes are loose. We're just going to take each one of these up and out of here. So we've got the ones out of the front. We'll just get these out of the back. Okay, so with the bolts out, it is in fact loose, but it's not enough slack to let me do what I need to do. I've got this little clip right here, and that'll give me a little bit more, but I'm just playing this by ear because ideally I want to disconnect as little as I possibly can so I can get underneath here. Um, so I'm just going to take a look at it here. Okay, and just to show you where I'm at, I took a few of these wires up here just to get enough slack. Now this is enough slack to where I can lift this up here and get and use my little pick tool and get these out from under here. So this is this is good. I can work with this. Now it's up to you. Like I said, of course, you know I could remove. Um, this wire harness and you move all these wires and lift it completely up here out of the way but then it's more work and I don't want to do that so I'm gonna pull it up enough to get my uh, these little intakes that you can see right here I'm gonna get those in there and just to give it a little bit of a wipe down under there and then we're gonna pop it back down just trying to minimize the work but you know you do it how you feel you can disconnect these wires you can uh, take this will pop up off of the injector and you can uh, remove your wires back off of there and get it that way but I'm just going to do it this way okay so we've got all of our lower intakes set under there as you can see it wasn't very difficult at all we've uh, scraped it down with a putty knife used a wet vac to vacuum up any debris in there so I'm just getting ready to set this back into place here now okay and we're just getting our bolts back in and lining this up and you can see down in there to kind of where you need to move it 
and we'll get them all lined up and started by hand before we go to tightening anything. Okay, I'm just using my quarter inch drive just to snug these down a little bit. Okay, these get tightened 89 inch pounds. If you don't have um, a torque wrench with inch pounds, I would suggest using, you know, like I had just a little quarter inch drive wrench and um, snug them down. You'll go in a crisscross pattern. Just zigzag here to here, start from the middle and work your way out. And just uh, snug them down with that quarter inch. You know, it's not a very big bolt. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. Don't get carried away with it. Just snug it down and call it good. So we're just torquing these. Once it clicks, check it again. And it's good. Okay, now just to show you again, the only things I removed was a couple of these little snap. To go over the studs. And I put those back where they went. But that gave me enough slack to pull this up and do what I needed to do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and work on our coal packs back here. You'll just give that a push down right there. And it pulls right off. So you're just pushing that down with your thumb. And, you know, these are self-explanatory the way they go back. So you take them loose. Push that out of our way, and we just lay them, lay them back here, just out of the way. We don't have to move it very far. So just like that. So I'm starting on the back ones. We got our, we got our uh, eight millimeter, and we're just going to get on this bolt. And I'll just go through here. I so said once you loosen them up, you can just take them out with your fingers. And same way with these, do not over tighten these, you'll strip them out. You know, just snug them down just a little bit with a quarter inch and call it good. I don't even torque these or anything, I just snug them down where I know they're going to stay and call it good. Okay, there's our three eight millimeters out of there. And we'll, all we have to do now is just pull this straight up or wiggle it. And that's all there is to that. And we'll just take each one of these out. We'll go ahead and get our new ones over here. After pulling these out, it looks to me like, you know, some of these have probably been replaced at one time, some hadn't. That's why it's good to do the whole set. That way you don't have to worry about it. Okay, and here we have them all laid out here, and we're just going to take them, start dropping them in, and just give it a good firm push, and it will line back up with that the bolt where it goes, and it will also, when we go ahead and fasten it down, it will seal that spark plug well. Give it a good firm push, just like that. And now we just have to get our eight millimeters and we'll just slip those back in there. Just go ahead and finish snugging those down with the ratchet after we got them started good by hand. So there's our first three. Okay, and just to show you how I'm snugging these, you can see where my hand is on this quarter inch ratchet. And that right there is good enough. That's all it takes. Okay, so we're just going to take our connectors, 
Just give them a push right back on there. Here you hear it click. Just like that. That's all there is to it. Okay, and we're just going to take these loose up here and go ahead and do our front ones before we put that intake back on. We could do these without the intake or with it on, but um, we're just going to go ahead and do them since we're doing the others. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to put this on for our throttle housing there. And you do got to get it lined up a little bit better than what I had it there. And so we've got all of the, the intakes here. And we got that one. And I've also took and uh, opened this up. And we took and cleaned that out really well with some starter fluid. So it's good to go. So at this point, I said these up here, uh, these cool packs, did them the same way I did the back ones. Uh, they're no different, except they're just up in the front. So we got those on and took care of. We're going to move some of this back out of the way momentarily and then go ahead and start working our uh, intake back on and we'll start getting these uh, vacuum lines reconnected back there. Okay, so we got it set back on here. We'll start lining up our eight millimeters here. And then the ones that are hidden in there, we'll get our extensions on. And then we'll just start working on getting these hoses and everything reconnected. And just get things back where they go. That one goes there. This one goes here, and then we got this one that goes back up onto here, and you just push that on to lock it, and also we've got these little connectors over here, just push those back into place on our intake, and we'll just get some pliers and put that back down. Okay, and again on these, if you're not uh, using an inch pound, we're gonna go 89 inch pounds. If you're not doing that, just use a quarter inch and snug them down and don't get carried away with them. These are just going into little brass inserts and you will strip them out. Okay, we've got our four bolts. We're gonna just go ahead and move this throttle housing back up here where it goes. Just flip it right back up into place here and get our bolts in there and we'll probably not go more than 89 inch pounds on these as well but I'll probably just snug them by hand okay we got those bolts snug down let's go ahead and reattach our connector right there <clears throat> I think we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and put these back I just put the bolts back where they go here and this is our first Bracket just sets like that. Start them by hand. Flip these over here. And then we're just going to get these two going here and here. Okay, just flip that back around with your hand, and then we just push that right back on there. Just have to flip it around. It's just hard to do one-handed, but just flip it around and then just pop it right back in there. Okay, so it should go in there just like that. Now this, this one here, we just gonna slip it back on that nub. We have to push it back, but it just slips right on there, and it's just. Uh, Just go ahead and push it until it snaps, and then that's locked on. So this is all good to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, get back here. We've got 
to get the bolts and the connector. Looks like on our vacuum and stuff back here. Okay, like I said, this is a 10, and then the one over here is an 8 that um, goes through the wire harness bracket and fastens this and this together because it didn't come off in two pieces like it's supposed to. Okay, with that tightened, both of those will go ahead and snap this connector right here back on, right there. Now we're just going to get our two bolts, our 8s going into our EGR here. We'll make sure we get them lined up. We're going to snug them, get them both lined up. And just like I said, be careful. Don't be over tight in this stuff because it'll strip these little inserts, little brass inserts out. And then they'll just sit there and spin. Okay, now this wire, come up here and put it back on to that stud right there. And then it's just gonna connect it right here, I see. <clears throat> and we haven't forgot about this little vacuum back here. You can see that I did, I found another hose. Um, it's off another tribute actually. It's a 2002 though, but we're gonna we're gonna route it um, back around and fasten it under here. You can see that wherever it's at under here. But it's just right under there. You can feel it just right here. Right there it is. We're just gonna slide it on there. There's no need for a connector. That vacuum line is plenty snug enough. And I've got a little bit more slack, so hopefully it doesn't try to suck in going around that bin like it did last time. Okay, so here is the um, the vacuum line that I found. It's actually going to work out better than what I had before. It's the same size. I'm just going to slip it on right back there. It's actually got a little bit of a bend in it already. So I'm going to just cut off what I need when I get back up here. So I'm just going to slip it on back there and then plug it right back underneath here. Okay, so there's my pipe. I got actually a little bit too much slack, but it'll be fine. It's on there and it's good. Oh, another thing, I'd unplugged that earlier. I plugged that back in right there. So uh, now we're just, I think, going to go ahead and get our boot back on here and we'll tighten the, the bands down with our eight millimeter. Okay, so we're just popping this tube back on. It just has an O-ring and some snaps and just pop it right back into that valve cover right there. And same here, just snaps right into place. Just push it down. Okay, so we just done a check over. It's always a good idea to double check, double check, make sure that you didn't miss anything. And uh, we're going to go ahead at this point and get our negative reconnected and we'll tighten that back up and then we'll test this out. We'll take it for a test drive and see how it's running now. Okay, here it is running. Um, I took it down the road and drove it around town a little bit. Uh, I was actually impressed with how much better it's running. I guess I didn't realize how big a difference it was going to make. Those coil packs were really getting bad and it's not doing their job because it's got a ton more power. The uh, miss that it had, a little bit of a miss it had on the idle completely went away. So really happy with this. Usually my luck doesn't go this well but these uh, pull packs really fix things up on here. So the only thing that we um, got left to do here is get our little shroud back on. Uh, we just will have to pop this um, piece right here out of the way temporarily. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll get that back on there, but uh, for now this is running really good and I'm happy with it. Um, you know, if you found the video helpful, please give it a like. As always, I invite you to subscribe and thank you for watching.